is the Glass Cannon Network. The Leviathans are spawning offshore, and that means it's time for another Haunted City, the show where we play Blades in the Oh, Blades <laughs> in the Dark. I showed the wrong side of the book, podcast Terrible. listeners. Blades in the Dark, the incredible game by John Harper and Evil Hat, available in dank basements filled with cutthroats and scum. My name's Jared Logan. I am the GM, and with me, as always, I have my talented... <laughs> And uh, horrifyingly brave cast who create chaos every time we play. Please welcome Abu Salim, Josephine McAdam, and Ross Bryant. Woo, woo, woo. Yo, 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 yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, son. Where'd you find this? <laughs> yeah. Now, that's what I call Duskfall 4. Uh, we've already <laughs> talked about that's what I call music on this show. I'm, I, I'm, uh, I'm bringing things back. Right. We talk about now. We talk about jock jams. Yeah, what? that's what we talked about. <laughs> oh, look, we're already out of things to talk about. It's like a marriage up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, hardly. We we, we got to do something to get the spark back. Should we? Should we like uh, go to a Sybaris or something? <laughs> uh, Sybaris would be some sort of uh, swinging sex club. Ross, is that what that is? <laughs> is that what that is? Yeah, it's like a. It's like a. Uh, pleasure retreat on like a it's like sandals but horny right i was thinking mm. more like a sip and paint class but oh just like to make your own pottery yeah um, yeah i was thinking more of like a go to an island where uh um you know we confront our desires <laughs> oh, how does wow. everybody everybody in this game is in a relationship how do you keep the spark in your relationship josephine mcadam go <laughs> oh my god well you know jaren we just have the perfect life, so there's no need to even think about that. Just wow, the, the spark is a, a flaming inferno. <laughs> I, I don't I don't think I have a real answer for you. I mean, you know, we're uh, yeah, marry your best friend. You still have that newlywed glow. <laughs> there so, it is, yeah. So Josephine, you would say that your hubster is your best friend. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um I hate Hubster, um, but <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't? Yeah, yeah. But I, I am some. I'm also wow. I'm also kind of loose with best friend because I feel like I have multiple best friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you are cheating on him. Um, <laughs> no, uh, good you God. you say to your husband, "You're my best friend," and then like ten <laughs> minutes later, he sees you turn to someone else and go. You're my best friend also. That's got to hurt. No, it's fine. Man, the uh, game dynamic is really uh, creeping this in is, here. This is well, really rough. Well, yeah, you keep yeah, nagging. And then, yeah, every now and then I let them pilot his body. It's a very complicated <laughs> scenario. Oh, I see. It's a duskfall thing. Well, mm. you know, I'm just thinking, you know, yes, this is a show where people listen to us play a steampunk crime role-playing game but why can't it also contain relationship advice you know oh right yeah okay There's you no know no reason what? it can't communication jared communication communication all right that feels like something people always say i'm looking for the really good gems here let's see if abu how do you mm. keep how do oh, you okay. keep the how do you keep the flame alive in your relationship what are some tricks and tips i medicate you medicate. Very good. <laughs> That's the kind of thing I'm talking about, Josephine. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. That's the kind of thing that you can really use. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of what kind of pills are we talking juicy. here? I see. Oh, you know, everything from paracetamol to maybe I don't even know what paracetamol pain is. Painkillers. It's, so, yeah, it's, it's pain their killers, ibuprofen. Exactly. So, yeah, so ibuprofen. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, you know, if I'm Feeling like a oh, gotta try something different. I might try you know some melatonin to put myself to sleep. Yeah, um, that normally that's, helps. That's uh, good. Yeah, honey, uh, I'm just gonna put myself to sleep. That's yeah. what our quality time together will be. Only works. Yeah, yeah. And if it's if it's if it's really really bad, 
Uh, Long pause. I'm worried about what's coming next. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. To be honest, I don't know. I mean, like, we just, we just, we just, uh, you know what, actually? Okay, on a real level, what we do is we give each other space. That's what it is. Interesting. You know? Like, you know, the thing is, like, she she enjoys her keeping up with the Kardashians, and I enjoy my gaming, you know? Or even role playing, right? Yeah. You know, if I say, honey, I'm going to go role play, she's like, sure thing, because she knows that I'm not going to be in a grill for the next like two hours. So, you know, that's kind of how it works. You know what I yeah. mean? Right. So that's you guys, the we, you guys even live in different houses, right? Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, I was yeah. sleeping in different beds, uh, yeah. eat different foods, different cutlery. Uh, yeah. You- yeah. When you when you do sleep over, you have that two bed situation, like in an episode of Ozzy and Harriet from the 1950s. Absolutely. No, no. We we share the same bed. It's just two different duvet covers. You know, like <laughs> okay. two different. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's it's yeah. actually a very Scandi thing. So yeah, it's Scandi. not actually. Thanks, it's Vikings. not actually. It's not actually losing your virginity if it's through a duvet. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Technically, I am still a virgin. Yes. Uh, <laughs> wow. me. I wish I could say the same, uh, but I've uh, spawned two. I, I, I'm on one of the Leviathans spawning offshore. I've spawned two people. This um, is invaluable advice. I'm just Ross saying. Bryant, Ross Bryant, what's your advice? You you liked the space comment from Abu. What's your advice for keeping the spark in a relationship? Yeah, you saw me giving snaps to the deep, deep wisdom of uh, Abu there. Because, yeah, space space is essential. We don't have to be – yes, I too, I would say – married my best friend but yeah. that doesn't mean we have to be <laughs> on each other all the time like a oh, yeah. uh, like a parasitic eel clamped to the side of a, a leviathan as it swims <laughs> through the deep you know right. sucking it of its vital nutrients we can have our own space um and uh much much like this i i can come in here and do my 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 role playing while my uh, wife can do things that she enjoys to do and right next she, to him by the way yeah yes, just often, wanna, just often say. four feet to my right and um <laughs> and when she goes out with friends um when she goes out with friends as she told me she uh, as she did last night um one of whom was uh, your wife, uh, Jared. Yeah, um, <laughs> that then she she has the space to get together with other um. Uh, partners of people who role play and mercilessly roast our asses for hours. <laughs> yeah. Oh and, no. And, and Michael um, probably needs in on this too. Yeah. And being able to just like hold your part, just, just flame your partner mercilessly for, for getting on their computer and doing his little voices is an essential component <laughs> of keeping a, uh, a keeping healthy a relationship marriage. healthy, wealthy and wise. That's great. Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, you know, my, if I could just see my secret, it would be, I, uh, actually, I, I, when, when my wife goes out with a bunch of people, I'm always like, who are they? Who are they? You know? And then when she gets home, I'm like, you're home a little late, you know? Uh, yeah, even if you, it's like nine o'clock, you know, you're often like in a robe, like swirling a snifter of brandy in a, <laughs> right. in a dimly lit room. Like somebody's back late. Yes, I'm always like, I don't have to remind you the consequences if you were to somehow shame this marriage. And then I uh, put the brandy down and march into the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the other thing I like to do is post a lot on socials about her to let her know how much I love her. Recently, I posted this thing where I said, I love my curvy wife, is what I said. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that backfired. She did get mad. But the point is that I'm trying. Jared, you joke, but I, I realized recently that I uh, most a lot of my social media posts did include my wife, and I feel I feel as though I'm I'm dangerous I'm dangerously close to becoming a quote wife guy unquote. I mean, hey. with a wife like yours, I makes makes perfect sense. I'm saying Dro- dropping the irony for a second. Ain't nothing wrong. With being a wife guy. (laughs) I don't see nothing wrong with being a wife guy. All right. Well, speaking of relationships, there is an interesting triangle that has developed Mm. over the last season and uh, three episodes among our crew, the remnant, 
Ekphelia, Valkos, and Juliet are in a dangerous sort of pyramid of conflicting emotions. And I can't wait to see how it all unravels uh, to probably everybody's detriment. And let's get into the show right now and find out. I will now speak my overly written intro. In a thousand words. years ago, this was a land of beauty and magic. Then came the cataclysm that blotted out the sun and ripped open the gates to the land of the dead. The city of Duskfall is a metropolis of factories and tenements surrounded by crackling lightning barriers. Outside the city is a wasteland of the ravening undead. Inside the city is a teeming hive of scum and villainy, intrigue and corruption. Life is cheap in a city ruled by death. The sun is gone. The only thing that shines in Duskfall are the blades in the dark. Dark, 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 dark. Sorry. Welcome back. Uh, oh. By way of a brief recap, we joined our crew, the Remnant, in prison at the beginning of this season. Incarceration in the game, Blades in the Dark, is an entire mini game unto itself. And we decided to role play it out with some free play and some downtime inside the prison. While they were in there, they got up to all kinds of interesting things, including using a shiv to stab one of the members of the bill hooks and digging a hole under the lightning barriers to some sort of ingress into the Deathlands outside. Will that come back up? It's hard to tell. There's a lot of plot threads weaving around here, but regardless, they were eventually released from prison after several months and they started to pursue their goals as a group. Their goal uh, being to find out who killed Ophelia, who caused, who was the catalyst for Ekphelia and Juliet's quest for revenge, first against the Spark Rites, which they have carried out by destroying Unaferos, and now against the people they think were probably responsible, the Leviathan Hunters, who make a lot of wealth by, you know, harvesting Leviathan blood from out of the Void Sea. <clears throat> they would be very afraid of what Ophelia and Juliet were working on, which was a alternative fuel source. And they probably, they're the most likely culprit of Ophelia's accident, which killed her and eventually led her spirit to inhabiting Ekapragwodi, creating the gestalt being Ekphelia. In our last episode, they decided to turn the tables on the Leviathan Hunters. The Leviathan Hunters had tried to hire them to spy on the Grey Cloaks. Instead, our crew decided to flip the tables and double cross the <laughs> Leviathan Hunters, get onto Lord Strangford's ship, the Crucifix, <laughs> and look for any kind of evidence that they could use to defame, hurt, or strike a blow against the Leviathan Hunters. What they're number one probably looking for is some sort of evidence that the Leviathan Hunters caused Ophelia's accident, but I think there's all kinds of things, all kinds of dirt that they might find on the Leviathan Hunters, and that dirt would be profitable because they could sell it to an enemy of the Leviathan Hunters. And so they did get onto the boat. They did interact with Eric, Lord Strangford's servant, minion, second in command. They did pass themselves off as trying to discover a mole in the Leviathan Hunters organization while Valko stuck into Lord Strangford's captain's suite and stole some sort of journal. Now we join our characters back in their grotto and six towers and we are gonna handle first XP, starting with Ooh. Ekphelia. Ooh. Right. Ekphelia, let's look at your <laughs> sheet. Ekphelia, you uh, you rolled some desperate actions. You yes, uh, rolled uh, two prowess desperate actions. It looks like in one resolve desperate action, mm -hmm. and uh, it looks like you only need one more point of XP to advance. Would you like to move any of those into your main XP tracker? Uh, yes, I will. Actually, I feel as though I may have some playbook. Uh, advancements also i might i might uh um see if wait i got one see. of those yeah okay yeah let's wait and see so um at the end of each session for each item below <laughs> mark one xp you displayed your dominance or slayed without mercy is that true of your vampire character i would say that the totally cruel and awfully sadistic way in which 
Um, Ecphelia set up the poor, poor minion of the Grey Cloaks to enter <sighs> the, the Leviathan Hunter's ship and then just use him um, as a uh, as a red herring, um, allowing him to be both psychologically and physically tormented. Mm. Um, definitely counts as asserting dominance. <laughs> I will allow it for one XP. Bringing me thus to a fulfilled playbook advancement track. That's um, right. Uh, and what, what do you think? Would you like to go ahead and take an advancement or would you like, I mean, you, you, you kind of have to spend that now. You kind of have to clear your XP tracker and spend it now. Oh, Absolutely. God. Absolutely. Not the vampire leveling up. <laughs> oh, yeah, vampires get some nasty abilities, including the, the ability you already have to read thoughts, mm -hmm. and, which and, I and, have tried to nerf as much as possible with no with no success. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> great. What do you think? You have a, um, You can wait. You can wait. We can finish up. That we can go ahead and know you have an ability coming, and go ahead and uh, keep filling this X. You know, start over in this XP tracker, shall we? No, uh, yeah, but I actually think I do know what I'm going to take. Okay, but, but we can. Oh. But we can resolve that maybe after, uh, or I'll let you know what it is after I, uh, um, uh, after we get done with this. Let's okay. see. So you next... expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage. Absolutely, you're going after the people you think might have killed you. Correct. And so yes. I'll give you two XP for that because this is a, you know, this is the core quest in the video game. This isn't a side quest you were on, right? This right, is right. The, the main storyline. Yes. Okay. No. And you struggled with issues from your vice trauma or strictures during the session. I don't know that you did. I, yeah, I don't know that I did. I never, never bled any or uh, sucked anyone. Um, <laughs> I think I would say that I did uh, um, lean into those traumas, um, of which I have many. <laughs> um, so your traumas are things like ruthless, obsessed, vicious. You did act that way, but I don't think that you had issues with them, right? Like, for example, if you were in a social situation and your viciousness messed with your ability to carry out the goal, I would say yes, but I would say that in this case, your viciousness and ruthlessness just sort of helped you. Yeah, fair. I'll, I'll, ta I'll say so. And even though I did reveal some creepy physical um, changes at the end of the last session, I did not. Oh. I did not necessarily trigger. But that that was. I people did see me. Um, Looking oh, yeah. a little more, a little I'm more. Giving, I'm giving you that. Take an XP for that. Yeah. Which is which is one of my strictures. Basically, so, the Leviathan Hunters know that you are a supernatural creature of some sort. It is conceivable they, they oh, could yeah. figure out you're a vampire. That's right. Yeah. Take an XP for that. Just checking in before we get your new special ability. You are you have one stress left that you probably need to clear during this downtime. Clear some of that during this downtime. Oh yeah. And uh, you are are you hurt? No, you're completely healed. So physically, you're fine. You just have, uh, you know, you have one stress away from a trauma. So you'll need to take care of that. Okay, what ability? What vampiric ability are you going to take? I am going to take the vampiric ability of terrible power. <laughs> I take one stress to perform a feat of superhuman strength or speed. Run oh faster God. than a carriage, break stone with bare hands, leap onto the roof of a building, etc. This factors into effect. Um, so now there's, yeah, vampiric um, feats of physical prowess. Oh, yes. Uh, Even harder to stop for anybody that, say, wanted to stop you or put you down or rid the world of your curse. But, much. but I uh, will also, when I take some one of those, when I take a new vampire yes. trait, I have to take a stricture. Thank I God. already have two. So that means I have to take one of the remaining three. And these are starting to get really prohibitive. Oh, awesome. Good. Oh, let's <laughs> let's see which one I select. Um, what a fun balance, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
cool. Um, man, oh man. Okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take one. And, uh, would you like to know what it is? Ooh, yeah, so you, it, just to let people know, you already have Forbidden. You cannot enter No, that's a the one I'm, st I'm picking. Oh, that's the one you're about to pick. You already have Bestial. When you suffer physical harm, you, uh, or overindulge your vice, you twist into a horrific bestial form. Right. And bound, your spirit must remain in the body or be destroyed. Now you're taking Forbidden. Tell people what that is. You cannot enter a private residence without permission from the owner. Oh, no. <laughs> you, it's, uh, it's, let, you've got to let the right one in. Oh, right. my God. In a, in a private residence, I must, I must be invited in to gain ingress. Yo, that's crazy as hell. Okay. <laughs> that's wild, man. That's wild, man. Yeah. <laughs> Pause. Pause, bro. For real? All right. <laughs> Uh, that is Ekphelia. Excellent, Ekphelia. Let us now look at Juliet. Juliet. Okay. Uh, tell me uh, about your XP. Let's start there. Well, let's look. First, you, you had a, a couple desperate resolve actions. You had a desperate insight action. It looks like your, your playbook advancement is clear right now. Yeah. Is that correct? So yeah. would you like to put those into playbook advancement or keep them on the attribute they're at? I'm going to keep them on the attribute. Yeah, I'm going to keep them on the attribute. I can't move them from one attribute to another, can I? I'm afraid not. Okay. Okay, so let's look at your <clears throat> your your, your uh, XP triggers. Um, you addressed a challenge with technical skill or mayhem. I think absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go ahead and take um, that. I'm going to put these into um, an attribute. Oh, can you do that? Can you yeah, move them over to it? We've done that before, right? Okay. Put... Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, you can. D am I making that up? Um. Well, huh. I don't think so. Uh, but I okay. will double check while we are while okay. while we are talking here. I'll keep here. count. I'll keep count. Okay. So you're going to uh, put one. I'm going to give you one for that. Okay. Um, um, I'd give you two <laughs> if you did something like you know when you created a giant bomb that destroyed an entire facility. But yeah, uh, that's it, fair. Your poisons and your uh, various things, I think, in this particular case, um, give you one. Okay. So now, uh, why don't we go to uh, your next trigger, which is you express your beliefs, drives, and heritage. I'm giving you two for that because this is your okay. main. This is your main quest. And um, finally, vice or traumas. Did anything happen with those? Um. No. You know. Ophelia is no longer my vice, and uh, though I did watch her torture, and I surprisingly, Juliet has no traumas, which is just incredible to believe. So no, I don't think I I dealt with uh, vice or trauma in this. You one. you may mark end of session XP on any XP tracks you want, any attribute or your playbook XP okay. track. Perfect. So we have checked that and it is all good to go. So I see you're trying to fill up your prowess XP. Mm -hmm. Um, great. Uh, just yes. a check in with you. You are too stress away from a trauma. Oh gosh. Yep. <clears throat> and you are still pretty hurt. You are level two yep. plasm soaked, level one bruised and terrified still. So, mm -hmm. uh, pretty banged up. Yep. Uh, anything else we need to know about Juliet before we move on to Valkos's XP? Um, no, man, she's tired. She's tired, man. Um, <laughs> her vice is going to be like chilling out with like a true crime show. She's going <laughs> to Netflix and chill. Yeah. Okay. Now let us come to uh, Valkos. Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Okay, Valkos. Wow, Valkos. You filled up your prowess tracker with desperate actions. Oh. <laughs> nice. So you, you may put a dot into another another action in, prow. in prowess. Yeah. I'm going to put it, it in into prow. prow. Okay, yep. and then clear that XP. You also had four desperate actions in insight. Not enough mm -hmm. to fill up the tracker yet, and you can move any of those into your playbook XP. Your playbook XP is cl currently clear. 
Mm. So let me know if you want to move any of those into playbook XP, and you also have two resolve desperate actions. Are you moving that into any of that into your playbook XP? Mm, hold on. Two, four. Uh, no. I'm actually going to keep... Actually, yes, I am. I'm going to move them all to my playbook. Woo! XP. All right. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Wow. Uh, yeah. It's special ability oh, time almost, uh, right? Sense. That's Yeah. Yeah, you get, you're two away, so you're probably going to get your new special ability. Okay. Mm. So, you addressed a challenge with violence or coercion. Now, this is interesting because... Mm. You were pretty sneaky tricky this time. I was, <laughs> and I don't think I'd used any form of violence apart from, I mean, again, you could say that I tried to open a lock violently, <laughs> but then at the same time, it was quite sneaky. So I don't I wouldn't necessarily say it was violent. Isn't this um, wild? Uh, Valkos is a man of many levels, many, many shades. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and say no on that one. Yeah. Um, wow. You express your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know. think I did. I don't I think, don't I think did. you did. What? I didn't. I was I was a man on a mission. That's yeah. right. And yeah. I was just keeping my my my. I was goal goal driven. That's so right. I don't think I did. And then finally, you struggle with issues from your vice or trauma during the session. I did not. You did not. All oh, right. I'm so happy that you think that, uh, and I'm not being a mean GM. No, I didn't because I was. I'm telling you, I was. I was very much. I had a goal. I went for it, and that's it, really. Um, yeah. Well, you did. Yeah. You you did. I mean, you, oh, wow. you you got a startling amount of XP from the whole thing, and you are very close to a playbook level up, a new special ability. But let's just check in. Valkos is one stress away from trauma. Yes. Valko still has the trauma obsessed. We should keep mm -hmm. that in mind as we play. Oh, wait, and Valkos yes. does? Yes, yeah. Valkos does. That's right. Y'all are both obsessed? Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Great. Okay. Well, <laughs> to be fair, Ekphelia has four traumas. So, yeah, yeah. Because uh, Ekphelia is a vampire. And uh, Valkos, you have one level one harm. You are bruised. Yes. So, um, that might be clearable during this session. Let's go ahead and. Oh. Now we do our crew XP. Oh, yeah. Almost forgot. All right. Crew XP. Crew XP. Um, I think we should have cleared your rep last time because you did go up to tier two, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So we cleared that. We, we took care of the coin, which all looks like it's empty now. You brought <laughs> yourself down to one at level one. So you are weak tier two right now. Let me see. Um... We're not in payout yet. We're just going to do XP. So, did you execute a successful burglary, espionage, robbery, or sabotage? Absolutely. Go ahead and take an XP for that. Are you filling it for us, or do we need I will. I will fill it for you. That's a good awesome. idea, since it's the whole crew. Contended with challenges above your current station? Absolutely. Level 5 <laughs> Leviathan Hunters? Yes. Bolster your crew's reputation or to develop a new one? Oh, you developed a new reputation, all right. <laughs> uh -oh. The Leviathan uh -oh. Hunters, as our <clears throat> friend uh, Ekphelia mentioned, or Ross Bryant mentioned, Leviathan Hunters know who you are and that you're out to get them now. All right. And uh, did you express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or essential nature of your crew? It, it was total chaos, and it was in the main quest campaign track, so I'll give you, oh, one for that. So you have half filled up your crew advancement tracker. Very good. Just to let people, you know, and remind people, it's important to remind people about certain things. You have two claims on your sheet. You have a turf claim and a covert drops claim. You were actually kind of using the covert drops to communicate with the Leviathan hunters before you double crossed them. So just letting people know that you also in your in your um, various crew upgrades, you have a hidden layer, hard to find. You have an upgraded vault so you can store more coin. You have an upgraded workshop so that your items have a higher quality. You have training in prowess available to you and you have higher quality supplies, it says. So uh, you have all of those things and uh, let's move on. Let's move on to payout. 
Oh, so, yeah. Payout. Very important. You're going to get five rep for this. Oh. Wow. And the reason I did all the math, the reason is okay. because of you get two automatically, and then you get for you know how high above their, your station they were. So oh, you have earned five great. rep, five rep for this one. That is a lot of rep, but I think that we also need to understand that that means that this is, this might get out. This might be known that this happened. This is, that's how you're accruing rep. Like this was mm -hmm. daring. This was brash and shocking, a shocking raid on Strangford's <laughs> own ship. So five rep for you there. And I would like to handle the rest of your payout with some play, okay? Because mm -hmm. what we said is there's people that would probably want to pay to get their hands on that journal. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we will handle that shortly. We'll deal with the coin in a minute. First, I would like to go ahead and uh, deal with your heat. Uh, okay. So I think that the heat is five heat. <laughs> So you got five rep, but you also got five heat. Oh and the gosh. reason is because uh, I did the, I did all the math here, but basically it was a like a level four heat job, and then you also like were dealing with you know powerful enemies on unfamiliar territory. So I'm giving you five heat. Might be a good idea to you know clear some of that if you guys have enough <laughs> downtime actions because pretty soon you'll be wanted too again and you don't really want that all right that's the heat and that's uh, a baby in the background we bring <laughs> yeah. our children we bring our children to work uh mine are sitting quietly right off camera right now <laughs> do not speak <laughs> <laughs> if you want candy do not speak <laughs> okay uh, let's uh, do our entanglements. Always a fun oh part gosh. of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, so uh, let's see. Your entanglements, I think that you are, uh, let's see. Your heat is five, and you are wanted level one. So roll a number of dice equal to wanted level and use the result based on the amount of heat you have. So who would like to roll one die? I'll do it. Uh yeah, yeah. I volunteer. Oh, yeah. Valkos has the best luck. So, what do I roll? You're going to roll a one die. Don't worry about its like position and effect because this is just for entanglements. Okay. And tell me uh, what you roll. I'm going to roll my command die. Um, I'm going to do it control. Can I do it in controlled, standard? Yeah, yeah. It yeah, it doesn't matter. even matter because it's just for entanglements. Three. A three. Okay, so questioning. Uh, the blue coats have grabbed someone on the periphery of your crew. Who will it be? It's an NPC you've met. It's someone you've had dealings with. I'm actually going to let the players kind of offer up some people that they think might have been Ooh. in danger of getting grabbed by the blue coats. Um, Anybody? I wouldn't, I wouldn't oh, say man. it's Sawtooth because Sawtooth is far away from this ship. Yeah. See, I would. Wonder Would if it be cruel to put Del Crofty in there if he even gets off the ship? Well, does he get off the ship is the thing. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like he... W I wonder how loyal he would be to us. Well, I, he wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. I feel like... What, what, what was the name of um, the... I'm sorry, the Great Cloaks? The second? There, the second in command there. Yeah, Hutch. that was uh, that was Hutch. I want to say it was Hutch. I think Hutch Ooh. got grabbed. I think Hutch got grabbed. That's a great idea. Hutch okay. knew almost everything about the mission, right? Because mm -hmm. Hutch was... So if uh, if he talks, that ain't good. All right. So in questioning, <sighs> you either gain heat based on a fortune roll, or you can pay off the blue, co blue coats with two coin. Well, you haven't really bought... You know, you haven't really... Because of the way I was handling it, you haven't really earned coin for what you've done yet. That's a little unfair, right? So let's say that Hutch is like currently being questioned. Would you like to go around and see if you can sell this journal? Mm. Yeah. We of course want to see what's in the journal first. Very good. Right. And so back in the sunken grotto, who is going to read it? I think 
Yeah. And, I, 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 yeah. I would give I would give Ophelia the honors because there might be some yeah. incriminating evidence, but I think we're, you know, sort of over the shoulder perhaps. At least Juliet would be. Then yes, of course I'll read it. The journal contains extremely sensitive and profitable information, but perhaps not the information that you would wish it to contain, Ophelia. Mm. It only details the last year, probably not within the bounds of when Ophelia suffered her accident. Strangford keeps a record of his voyages on the crucifix. After a hunt in which he was personally injured by a great leviathan he calls Hantu, which is pale and eyeless covered in stinging spines, Strangford has a period of feverish convalescence. Afterward, he experiences a series of episodes where he hears the demon's voice in his head, commanding him to travel outside the trade lanes into unexplored water. He resists, but in the days that follow, is horrified to discover a spine growing out of his torso. Oh. <laughs> the final entry doesn't appear to be written in Strangford's hand. It reads, can you hear music? It calls us out to sea into the dark water where there are no lights there to dance in the deep. Oh, great. So I'm, I'm just imagine uh, actually reading that by guttering candlelight. Um, and <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Um, oh my God. Well, this is huge. Yes. Those that ply the abyssal waters and stare too deeply into their depths should be warned that the abyss stares back and probes into them. It seems our friend Strangford is undergoing a change. It would be a shame if this malady were known to the public at large. Very good. So, with, armed with this incredible secret, are you going to sell the journal and earn some coin from this score? And who are you going to sell it to? Yeah. Um, I, I say yes. Let's sell it. Um, yeah. And yeah, who who should we sell Ooh. it to? We the um. Those who would be most, uh, we, we, we learned some of this earlier, like who would be the, the rivals who want to see the uh, Leviathan Hunters taken down a peg. The Grey Cloaks know that the Grinders, a Scovelin gang uh, from right. Scovelin, they would really want to get their hands on this. And the other group is a Dustfall institution. They believe that the Ministry of Preservation would like to know about this. That sounds like a more uh, potentially lucrative client. Right, with a name like that. Mm. <laughs> Ministry of Preservation. Are they, am I rem are they enemies with one of our allies? Is that something that we would know even? They, um, are they enemies? Well, they, uh, they definitely are allied with the Spark Rites. That's what I thought. I was like, something's mm -hmm. ringing a bell here. On so that may make Juliet unwilling to go to them. Interesting. You know, Juliet, it's not inconceivable. Do you think that the Ministry of Preservation could even have been part of the conspiracy that killed <sighs> Ophelia? Right, okay. probably, I guess. It's some, oh man. Um, I, I don't know. This this whole city is corrupt. I, it sometimes feels like there is no direction to turn to that is clean. There's also want, the... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Julia. If you want to go to the ministry, by all means, taking their money, I, I'm not against. Mm -hmm. We should make this public... We should go to a, a crier or some form of um, news outlet. 
Let them know of this malady. Yes, we can sell it. But we should make it known. Our friend Valkos is very wise. We should, of course, fetch whatever coin that this information can provide for us. But if our client proves to be clandestine and secretive with the information, using it to their own strange ends, we should make sure that the ink rakes know what the populace of Duskfall has a right to know. I agree. I, uh... Let me see this for a moment. Could I try to forge a duplicate of this? I don't see why not. Yeah, I I would love to try and do that so we have, like, a copy. Very good. Are you just getting a copy where you can read it, or are you getting a copy that people would be fooled into thinking is real? I would like to have a copy that people would be fooled into thinking is real. Okay, then I would like some sort of action on your part because of your workshop, I'll say that in your in your really good supplies, I'll call this controlled for okay. great effect. If you succeed here, you will have a flawless copy. Can I use my tinker? Uh, I ability? think so. I don't see why not. Okay. Mm-hmm. You said great effect. Yeah. A six. Hey. There it is. Um, You have a flawless copy of the journal. Okay. Down to the handwriting. Wow. Excellent. So. Okay. uh, Who shall we make our sale to? Look, if if this turns the ministry against the Leviathans and... This will create all sorts of turmoil as the Ministry works with the Spark Rites and they work with the Leviathans. I'm all for seeing what this creates. However, there is a chance they will just attempt to cover it up, which is why I think it is important, as you say, that we bring this elsewhere. Yes. And if our two enemies find themselves locked in some sort of conflict, and let us shut the latch on this little cage in which we've trapped our two rats and give it a little shake. Beautiful. Yes. So are you deciding to go to the ministry first? Yeah. If that doesn't work? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So in order to approach the ministry, they are a tier five organization. <laughs> Can you, you are even a, go in? <laughs> you are a tier two organization. You, if you think I'm about to say the door is locked, you are incorrect. But I think outside of a score, in order to make some sort of social connection with them, it would be difficult because you guys have no previous connection to them. If anything, you have a negative connection with their ally, the Spark Rex. Right. So I would like whoever's doing this in a free play mode to explain to me how you mitigate their tier which is three above you in order to establish a social connection. And then we'll um, make an action roll to establish it. Can you tell me exactly like the, what's the, the ministry of preservation? Like what is their mandate? Absolutely. The ministry of preservation, they are in charge of, uh, the, uh, food of <clears throat> Duskfall, the, uh, the, the, shipping of goods in and out of Duskfall. Basically, they are they oversee transportation between cities and the disbursement of food and other vital resources. Okay. I, I was actually laughing and thinking about how about Ross's new stricture. Well, if we go to their <laughs> office, that's not a private residence. I'm going to be oh, I'm, I'm going to be leaning on that letter private. of the law very much <laughs> in the days to come. <laughs> Uh, Let me tell you a little bit more about them. They have a fleet of cargo ships with armed escorts. They have a significant, a significant treasury from taxation and transportation licensing. And the rail jacks who work the train lines are their employees. The rail jacks being those people who can fight off ghosts as the trains travel to different locales. Great. Um, 
So yeah, uh... I actually think, I think Juliet shouldn't be the one to go, because I think she might be on their radar if they do work closely with Spark Rites. Yes, um, and Ophelia is wearing a different face now, so... I, I could, I could go and try to make this, make the sale. Great. You just have to, right now you have no effect in order to establish a connection. You just have oh. to tell me the things you're going to do to get yourself an effect, even a limited effect, and then you can make the action roll. Okay. Um, is there any information in the journal about the ministry? Very good. Looking through the journal, you you do see some mentions that Strangford is uh, very on guard against the ministry, whom he says are trying to take over the Leviathan blood trade from the Leviathan hunters. The Leviathan hunters are all members of noble houses who have their own ships. And he says that the ministry have been constantly trying to make inroads into their trade and take it over. Um, and do they mention anyone by name? Yes. Lord Dalmore. Okay. A change of plan. Maybe a private residence meeting is the way to go. <laughs> I might I might I might go and pay a call on Lord Dalmore. In other well, words, I it might is in your hunting grounds, seek which an is invitation. White Crown. It is in your hunting grounds, which is White Crown. I will go ahead and say, because it is your hunter hunting grounds and you are used to operating there, I will knock off a a one tier of difficulty. So you still have no effect. You just have to mitigate two more tiers to get like a standard effect here. So, oh my gosh. Okay. What else are you doing? So you're going directly to his house. Yikes. Okay. No, well, I, I, I think um, I would try to find uh, someone that, I would try to find an intermediary that could um, get me a meeting. Um, Very good. I'm not just going to knock on the door. Um, I would like to yeah. find someone that would that would uh, could get me a a social interaction with this person. Who's our crew contact? I don't see it marked, and I couldn't remember. Um, we know. Josephine asking the hard questions. Well, yes. in case we can use it. I think they got, I think they got killed because oh, they screwed well, okay, us over. Yes, it. it was Fitz a collector. Oh, crap. Yeah, it was and he screwed Fitz. us over. Yo. Yeah, Fitz got so killed. Thank maybe, you for remembering things, Abu. So maybe then we have a new crew um, ally and maybe we use them. Maybe it's um, maybe it could be a Mancio, a deal broker. <laughs> that sounds That sounds great. <laughs> Um, that's such smart gameplay <laughs> that I'm going to knock off another tier of difficulty. Right now, you have limited effect against against the Ministry of Preservation. Amancio, a deal broker. Let's talk to Amancio, shall we, Ekfilia? Yes. Come in, come in, come in. Yes. <laughs> it's so nice to make your acquaintance. We have many mutual friends, yes? Yes, so it seems. Yes! And you wish to arrange a meeting with some of Duskfall's uh, more uh, rarefied clientele, yes? Yes, indeed. I understand that uh, at your brokerage house, you're used to being a conduit between interested parties. And uh, this is precisely what we're, what we're asking. Certainly, to, just to make tell a friendship. me. Yes. Certainly, just tell me what your business is with... Uh, who was it that you wanted me to uh, make an introduction to? Good Lord. And the name was? Lord Dalmore. Thank you. Uh, Dalmore. If you please, Amancio. Uh, Lord Dalmore. Yes, and what shall I tell Lord Dalmore? How shall we make this introduction? Why would he be interested in meeting you? <clears throat> Well, I hope that a person in your position understands uh, the importance of discretion, because what we have to offer is something touching upon the livelihood of Lord Dalmore, and indeed perhaps his safety, and the safety of 
everyone in Duskfall. That I would sounds say very that this, threatening. Yes, that this touches on the <laughs> preservation of all of us, which seems to be precisely his bailiwick. A threat to the city. Yes. Do I understand you? That's right. A very dangerous threat that, that a, a mere citizen such as myself am, am nowhere near equipped to uh, confront, but someone of his potency uh, might be able to take a firm hand in a lane. There are channels to go through with these sorts of reports. You wish yes. to go around them. Yes, quite. As I said, discretion is of the greatest value here for the safety of all parties. And whom shall I tell him he's meeting? Mm, yes. Uh, you may tell him that he is meeting... Um, I think I... Hmm. I might use an alias here. Um, might be smart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> just uh, tell him that he is meeting with Mr. Smile. <laughs> Mr. Smile. <laughs> That sounds made up. <laughs> I'm sure he's uh, clever enough to know the same. And I would hope that he would discern from that the import and the danger associated with the uh, information that we have to broker. Very well, I shall do my best. I can't make any guarantees, but your fee to me will be dependent on my success. Yes? Yes, of course. Right. So, the attempt costs half a coin, down payment, and success means one coin. Uh, I will <laughs> bill you. It's not due immediately. And uh, because he is your contact, I'm going to make him the same tier as your crew, tier two. And I'm going to roll two dice for a fortune roll to see how well he does making this, setting up this meeting. And he rolls a six. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Now you currently still have limited effect. Do you want to do any final thing to mitigate that situation? Or do you want to go in with limited effect and see how that what goes? What is the chance of perhaps me using my prowl to put a letter or a quote from said diary and posting it? Or finding it in, you know, like with a with a smile, also on the face on on the actual <laughs> piece of paper. Yeah. So it's almost like a law. So you know, he would have had again the invite from Mister Smile, but then he would have also had hand on this letter by Mister mm -hmm. Smile, which he which only connects to him, which feels very personal. Give me a prowl action roll, Love and that. let's make it. Let's make it uh, risky mm. for standard effect. Mm. And uh, the risk, the consequence if you fail is, I think this meeting is not going to happen. Oh, nah. wait, that seems desperate. I know. Well, no, nah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's desperate. Oh, there we go. Can that's, I, I, I re-roll it? Because I failed that one. But can I re-roll it? Desperate? <laughs> can I re-roll <laughs> <laughs> Let me, we're making oh, it because that's You guys desperate. are so eager to roll those dice. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. You're right. That would be desperate if it was the meeting is off. So I'm changing okay. it. The meeting now cannot go beyond limited effect. And we will okay. be right back after this commercial break to find out how that meetings go. How that meeting goes. How that meetings goes? We'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, with Haunted City on the uh, Glass Cannon Network. I can't talk!
Welcome back to Duskfall, and we will get right back to where we were at. Valkos failed a roll to leave a note for <sighs> our friend Lord Dalmore of the Ministry of Preservation. I think it was more that he was appalled that someone had gotten into his house. <laughs> and, and although he is intrigued, you are going to have <laughs> limited effect on your action roll to sort of sell this thing to him. Right. And I think that Amancio comes back to you and wants you to meet him at his office. Lord Dalmore wants to meet at the office. You can counter offer and say no, no deal, or you can say that's okay. At um, <clears throat> the Ministry at, of Preservation's offices in Charterhouse. Um, interesting. Too dangerous. Let's do it at Amancio's office. Very good. Amancio, uh, yeah, Amancio actually has an office out of his like little, his like very humble, but trying to be rich manse. Mm -hmm. He has like a manor house that he has put a bunch of very expensive stuff in that doesn't quite have the full effect of making it look like he lives in opulence. And so you find yourselves sitting in a drawing room with tea and scones in front of you. And Amancio says, well, I'll let you two get to it. Uh, and he exits the room and you are sitting across from a very severe looking man with a bald head, but a shoe, uh, a, sh a horseshoe of hair around his ears. Mm -hmm. And he is wearing a Ministry of Preservation dress uniform, which looks sort of like what the Empire wears in Star Wars. And he <laughs> says, well, you have my attention. I understand your mandate is the preservation of all the citizens of this city. That is correct, yes. We maintain the supply lines that feed the city. We protect the cargo from ghosts and other entities. There are I, many must say, I must say, <laughs> if I may interrupt you, that I don't take kindly to having my security compromised by your people. Compromise of security. Yes. A very apropos choice of phrase. Because it's you and your noble organization that stands as a bulwark to all our security to prevent it from being compromised. And there are other institutions in our city that also preserve us. And one would hope that they hold themselves to as high a standard as you yourself. And yet, Your Grace, Lord Dalmore, there are organizations here removing the book that it seems have been falling short of their mandate. As I believe the note that was given to you suggested, a very powerful organization, it seems has been regrettably compromised. Yes, so you're looking to sell this tidbit to me? I might not put it in so crass a terms as that, but you cut right to the meat of things, yes. Allow me to peruse your merchandise. Very well, I slide the book over. Is there any particular entry that I should devote my attention to? Though I'm sure your keen and discerning eye would enjoy um, the day-to-day -day operations of so worthy a ship as the Crucifix, I believe the last entry will be that which piques your curiosity the most. You, you may recognize Strangford's own hand. He reads. Let's see if he does recognize Strangford's own hand. As I'm sure all of you uh, city potentates must be in correspondence with one another. It's very convincing. Am I supposed to believe that you somehow stole this from Strangford? You took it off of the crucifix? Is that what I'm <clears throat> supposed to believe? That's impossible. I mean, for some line, someone like you, it would be impossible. Oh, for someone like me, I assure you, it's impossible. You would never catch me 
on such a vessel as that. But there are parties within the Leviathan Hunters that remain loyal to civic safety. And those can abscond with such items, pass them into hands of interested parties, who in turn pass them into the hands of a party such as myself, who has a connection with our mutual friend, Amancio. How do I know it's not a forgery that you are trying to make some money off of me by concocting this entire thing? I admit the script is convincing, but I have seen good forgeries before. I mean, I would, I would ask you to interview, uh, and as far as authentication goes, I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to authenticate a, a journal, um, but, uh, like, I might lean over and be, say, you can subject this to any authenticating rigors that you wish. I'm sure that the ministry has people that can appraise the worth of all manner of items. But I'm sure you could set this against Strangford's other correspondence, or perhaps conduct interviews with uh, others who have been on the crucifix and know the waters that it is plied. But I assure you that the authenticity of the document which you now hold is second to none. This was writ by Strangford himself. The man is compromised. He is becoming a demoniac. It... One must conclude that there may be other such captains in the fleet of the Leviathan Hunters. Let me stop you there. I think it's time to make our action roll. Mm. What action are you going to use to make this deal? Seems like I'm using sway. It does. You have limited effect right now. Would you like to take a devil's bargain in order to make this deal and that, get standard effect? That sounds intriguing. What 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 do you have? The devil's bargain is you reveal your nature to Lord Dalmore as well. The ministry. I, I oh yeah, of course I do it. Um, <laughs> yes, I'll take that. I'll take that bargain. Very good. Make your action roll. It will be risky for standard effect. The only risk here is that, well, you're already taking a huge risk by the fact that you, you know, you're revealing yourself and you're going to tell me how you do that. Mm -hmm. But the risk is that he will offer less money and it will be non-negotiable if you fail. Okay. Okay. But I'll get, I'll, if I, so I get less money if I fail. I get mm -hmm. more if I succeed, but I, I reveal myself either way. That's I'll right. I'll take it. Here we go. Here comes the sway roll. Five. A five. Is that success? is a success. It's a success with a consequence. Well, there's already one huge consequence is that the head of the Ministry of Preservation knows that you are some <laughs> sort of supernatural creature. He doesn't know my name. He doesn't know who I represent. No, he does Ooh, not. Okay. Um, but yeah. I am going to create a clock. And that clock is going to be Ministry of Preservation acts against uh, Hunts Ophelia. When it's full, the Ministry of Preservation starts hunting Ophelia. And I'll make that a six segment clock. But right now, I would like you to tell me how you reveal yourself while you are making your final pitch. How do you show your vampiric nature? <clears throat> okay. Uh... <laughs> How indeed. Uh, yeah. Uh, so as he's got, he's got the book slid it over and he's reading it. Um, I can only imagine the uses to which someone as powerful and adroit as yourself can put this information. Yes? So I should hope that we are in one another's confidence and 
that we will be remunerated in a way that is uh, commensurate with the information that we have proffered to you. Let me stop you. Uh, he uh, goes to a lockbox. He opens it. He pushes over a tremendous amount of money. Eight coin. Excellent. Eight coin. And then he says, I just thought of how you revealed yourself. He looks at you and he cocks an <laughs> eyebrow and he says, perhaps there'll be another occasion for me to invite you in. Um, and I look back. Yes, perhaps there will. Please make an invitation if there is another way that Mr. Smile may be of use to you. And let's end the scene there. I'm going to go ahead and give you eight coins. Oh, boy. Do we get plus two for the covert drops? Bonus. Oh my God. Is that how the covert drops? <laughs> plus, plus two, two. A for espionage or sabotage. I have to call it. I have to call it espionage for mm -hmm. sure. Right? Yeah. So let's see. You have the vault, which gives you. So all of your coin fits in the vault, except for the two extra coin you earned from the covert drops. Can we take drops. some of it? Yeah. And I th I'm, I'm sorry Can to, to just like- Can we each take a coin? Yeah, yeah. You want to go back to the scene, I bet. I'm, I do, but I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Gr greedy, My greedy play, The players are always, they're always like, but wait, I had another thing to say. But wait. And that's fine. <laughs> go I, ahead. I, it's, yeah, totally worth it, I'm sure. Um, the, um, <laughs> the, uh, I just that, the, I think maybe what tipped him off was that like, if he was mulling something over in his head and if Mr. Smile began almost saying what he was thinking at that moment, um, like, uh, yes, it could, of course, um, upset the trust that the public at large has for the Leviathan Hunters. A blow against Strangford of this, wait, might be enough to, uh, you to take over some of their shipping lanes and only you could ply the waters. Um, and as he looks into the eyes that are that are repeating what his inner monologue is saying, it's not the eyes of a person, but the candlelight is reflecting like the eyes of a wolf. <laughs> Perfect uh, and horrifying. Eight coin. And now I'm going but to double back and ask. Wait, do ten. you? What? Oh, what? Stop. Stop, Jared. You said, you said it's 10 coin, two. right? It's 10. Oh, it's my God. But oh, we, no. Yes, it's 10 coin. Relax. <laughs> Everybody but, put but, your guns down. But we do. We can keep it in the vault because we've upgraded it to full capacity. So well, we can yeah, hold up to 16, you, right? You took one vault. Oh, yes, you're right. You can keep it in the vault. Thank you. You did. Okay, you well, I'm taking one. So just <laughs> do nine. <laughs> and one, one goes to Amancio also. That's true. Oh, that's right. So there's eight in the in the vault. Okay. Okay. And uh, there's eight in the vault. Julia Sorry. has one. And I got to say, guys, you, the last time the Path of Echoes didn't charge you because you had done a, a job for them. Ah, but shit. this time you still need to pay up to them. Okay. Two coin. Two? Okay. That's what it's been. Is It's not better because our tier is up now or anything? Nope. Oh. Are you going to pay off the Path of Echoes? Two coins? Yes. It's always been we'll, two? We'll pay them. We'll pay them. Yeah. Okay. How do we get a discount on that? Uh, I, uh, you know, well, well, you got a discount last time by you took a mission for them. <laughs> yeah. And what you and can also, decide is to take a mission for them. And also, we can find someone who can pay us, right? Yeah. We need to so get paid. We just need to, we need to find that balance. Anyway. Yeah. 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 Very okay. good. All right, excellent, excellent work, everybody. Um, okay, one last like disruptive thing to like throw a wrench in things is that while this was going down, was our quest at oh, our quest, our score, uh, would it qualify for vengeful at all? Absolutely. Payback against someone who harmed you or someone you care about? Yeah. Okay. So we should get an extra crew XP, and then I think I get an extra. XP. All right. But, uh, but we're back to XP. I'm going to give you an extra. Just for a moment. I'm going to give I'm you gonna... extra crew XP, and I'm just going to start Great. the episode over again. A thousand <laughs> years ago. 
All right. Um, I, I do there. You know what? I have to go back and mention something I forgot to mention, which is I'm going to go ahead and give you a negative two relationship with the Leviathan hunters. They are now hostile to you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that makes total I, sense. Like everybody agrees that that is fair. Okay. Now we are finally into our downtime activities phase. Wait. Does anybody want to go first? No, the, okay, in fairness, this is something that's probably going to be a detriment to us, but wasn't this all so that we could resolve our entanglement? It was, thank you, and I was about to do that before I uh, went back to doing XP. I'm all right. sorry, it's me, it's all my fault. It's no, no, no. no one's, let's, it's let's no one's. Let's close the circle, close the circle. Let's close Hutch, the circle. Hutch is at the police station. Do, <laughs> Hutch is at the police station. Do you wanna pay off the blue coats or do you wanna have me roll and see how Hutch does in terms of the questioning? If Hutch does poorly in terms of being questioned, you will gain heat. I'd say he can handle himself. <laughs> yep. Okay, he can handle himself. Let's see how he does. I just have to look up the entanglements here. Here they are, okay. So Hutch, they bring him in. They're asking him about what? Uh, the Grey Cloak's movements, but you know, the Grey Cloak's movements have to do with you now. You guys are closely allied in a way. So, actually, I shouldn't use the term allies. You are friendly, right? Or helpful. Friendly? Helpful. Okay, they are fully helpful with you. Okay, here we go. Questioning. He gets two dice because he's a tier two, just like you. And he rolls a five, one heat. See? You gain you one know, heat. Himself. Okay. All right, Hutch. Yeah. Nice, Hutch. a boy, Hutch. Yeah. <laughs> Good game, Hutch. Good game. Good game, Hutch. Way to Hutch it out there. Okay. <laughs> and you now have six heat, three more heat, and you will gain a wanted level. Yeah. Let us now go into downtime activities. Mm. Who would like to go first? Let's do it. Let's do it. Valkos. Valkos, mm. you aren't very badly hurt. You no. are you uh you do have a lot of stress though. I'm very right? stressed. So I'm gonna indulge in my vice. Great. Uh I am going to what do I roll? Resolve, right? Um that's right. So let's just describe where you go. Do you go out to the path <clears throat> of echoes again and let them So do I Yeah, I think I've got my like I've got I've got my ghost. I've got a ghost <laughs> that I go to. And mm -hmm. this is where my uh, calculating special ability comes from, because I've been hanging out with this ghost for quite a while, talking to them, getting to get you know, getting to to know them, them getting to know me, and we play chess in this really derelict, dark, dank space. And it's just a conversation between me and this ghost. And this is and this is my I think with my my work with the Path of Echoes has has taught me to kind of contain that sense of recklessness and and really kind of focus. I love that. It's definitely weird and it definitely is a kind of more controlled version of how you expressed your vice previously. Mm. So um, let us, uh, this is a new character, this ghost, right? <clears throat> so let's give him a name. Is, is, is it a uh, gender male ghost? Yes. His name is Iden With. Iden With. Wow. Okay. Iden with. I like Iden. So okay. I think that the level of communication you get, because you know the ghosts when they're behind the veil, sometimes it's it's hard to understand them, or it's hard to kind of really connect to them as people. Sometimes they seem like entities almost. Now when mm. they ride you you definitely get a sense of who they are. But um, let's see how this goes. You're gonna roll your lowest attribute rating. Okay. And you're going to clear that much stress. Your current stress is what? It's like one away? What What was it? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. one away. So I just okay. rolled a three. Uh, you only clear three stress. And okay. I think that in this particular case, Aiden, you're able to get the name, but Aiden just like, sort of moves pieces, you know? You don't get that great high you get from like 
astrally connecting to his personality. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you have cleared three stress. I'm going to come back to you, Valkos. Mm. Oh, no, I'm not. Because do you uh, carry these out at the Path of Echoes or do you do you um, do do you do this on your free time away from the Path of Echoes? I do this on my free time away from the Path of Echoes. This this specific this specific one. I'm going to do an, I'm going to I mean I've got 3, so I'm going to do another one later with the Path of Echoes. Very good. <laughs> so I will move away from you and we'll get ready for that one in a little bit. Who would like to go next? Um Mine's pretty simple. I'm going to go to the fighting ring uh, that the Grey Cloaks run and indulge my vice of getting beat to a pulp. Very good. <laughs> okay. Juliet's new vice of getting beaten up. Stupor, right? Yep, stupor. Okay, great. You go to the fighting pits. You see that Hutch is there. Uh, and he says, oh. uh, they tried to shake me down. Uh, I heard, uh, I heard. I'm very sorry for that. How are you doing? Fine, but they're on to us. Move quietly for the next couple weeks. Of course. That is uh, what we do best. You know who now you're I've... up against tonight? No, who do you have me up against? Why, we have you up against... The pugilist who happens to be someone's rival. Which of you no is that? No way. No way. Yeah. My rival? Yeah. Yeah. Tonight you're up against Marlene, a pugilist. Awesome. Marlene. I feel like I've heard that name before. Now, hmm, what I want to know is, do you re relieve more vice if you get beaten up? Or do you relieve, I'm sorry, do you relieve more stress if you get beaten up? Or do you relieve more stress if you win? Oh, um, I mean, I think she still tries to win. Yeah, you know. So you She's relieve more stress if you you relieve but, more stress if you win. Yeah, but it can't be. I can't. It can't be like steamrolling. Like I, I have to get beat up in the process. Well, no matter what, you'll take some blows. Okay, yeah. but okay. I think you relieve more stress if you are victorious. Does that sound yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead. What's your lowest attribute rating? Resolve. Resolve. Let's do it. One die. <laughs> mm. Oh, six! Damn, Holy shit. All right. Shit. You kick Marlene's ass. Unbelievable. <laughs> you take a couple hard blows to the jaw, and there's going to be a bruise there, but you use your newfound uh, skirmishing techniques to great effect. You are, uh, describe how you defeat her. What is your fighting style like? Ooh, what is uh, Juliette? Let's see. It is probably calculating in a way, but, you know, she is explosive, as we know. And I think it's that people underestimate when they see her because they, they just see this, like, petite, you know, sort of, like, calculating scientist, so to speak. And then out of nowhere, I think she, like, bum rushes people and, like, like, like a feral cat attacks them. They pull you off of Marlene. Marlene is a tall, wiry, very hard muscled woman with a shock of fiery red hair. She is senseless when they pull you off of her and the crowd cheers. Marlene doesn't like Juliet either. Now, <laughs> let's great. move on to Ekphelia. Ekphelia. What is your first downtime activity? I am going to feed. Yes, that sounds prudent. Yeah, to, to Where get some and of the how? stress out. Um, let me do the roll and based on the result, maybe see, answer that question. That sounds like a good idea. Um, what do you roll as a vampire? Your hunt. lowest attribute. Oh, hunt, that's Always right. Always hunt. And I rolled a six. Holy shit. Oh, nice. Oh, my rolls are bad That doesn't tonight. overindulge, does it? No, I've got a lot of stress. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so six is good. Um, this was this, and that's a lot. <laughs> so. It sounds like you probably killed somebody. You know what? I think it does. Um, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so maybe in a, was it White Crown where I met with? Uh, Lord her? Dalmore. 
Yeah. Or <laughs> Kill someone le- in White Crown. Le- or leaving, leaving Amancio's little, uh, little place. And as I, um, and shut the door and pop collar out into the eternal night. <laughs> and I think it's just, yeah, maybe, um, seeing, a seeing a young, uh, reveler out on the street, kind of walking, walking home, uh, a pair laughing, uh, intoxicated. One of them peels off. Um, they're alone now. Um, they look over their shoulder. There's no one there. Down, down the streets, down the streets. And, um, right as his, uh, hand closes on a wrought iron gate latch, feels a tap on, on his shoulder, and then lips close over his mouth and suck his vital essence out. (laughs) Very good. Revelers in White Crown. Some sort of festival must be going on because White Crown is, you know, where the government seat is located and all of the very most wealthiest of Duskfall. So some kind of festival or special celebration is going on. There's what do masks. You think- They're wear- he's wearing like a, a long, like a mask with a long nose, like porcelain looking <laughs> with little paints in there. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like carnival. <laughs> And yes, for one day the government is put in charge. Uh, I mean, uh, fools are put in charge of the government. A fool's feast. <clears throat> yes. And some people down in the docks might say, "What? How does that make it different from any other day?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> These clowns up in White Crown. Are That's always- right. <laughs> <laughs> so you have relieved quite a bit of stress. Excellent, Ecphelia. Let's go back to Valkos. Mm. And I'm gonna go visit the the Path of Echoes. Very good. Ring leads you into the inner sanctum beneath the lighthouse and says, how have you been faring, Falcos? And this is where I hand him the two gold coin that we always give them right. a tithe to. I'm like, I've been, well, seen better days yet. Not so bad either. We appreciate your oblations to the Path of Echoes. Ring pockets the coin and then says, Do you wish to meditate at the spirit well? I do. But before I do, I uh, have a question for you. Yes. When we were incarcerated, did you send someone uh, I believe that you carried out a important errand for us. Yes. But I did not send anyone. There was a, a spirit that um, I was host to. And normally I am uh, very good at remembering who... I am hosting this one now. Well, we knew that that might be one of the dangers of securing an ingress into the Deathlands. That's why we tapped you for that special favor. Yes. You've lost time again. Yes. Meditation at the Spirit Well can help with such things. Yes. Before you join the others, though, I wonder if you might consider helping the Path of Echoes with a small favor. What favor? There is a ink rake, a reporter, who has somehow, we hear gotten wind of some of the identities of this group, which I know you understand depends on secrecy. (sighs) Her name is Vorka Bramble. (laughs) We would like for you to 
persuade her not to publish the identities of members of the Path of Echoes. It is done. Thank you, Valkos. I don't need to tell you that this is time sensitive. So complete your meditations and inform the rest of the remnant that they have a mission. <clears throat> Ring walks deeper into the complex. Let's try to relieve your stress. Okay, here we go. Oh, another three. Mm. Another three. It's good though. I'm not, I'm not gonna overindulge. Overindulge, oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it, at the spirit well now, spirits move in and out of you without latching on too, too tightly and taking you over. And it allows you to kind of exert control and remain aware of what's happening to you instead of losing time. Mm. And that is how meditation at the Path of Echoes spirit well works. Let's move back to Juliet. What is your next downtime activity? I think I'm going to sort of uh, meld some free play into this downtime just because the downtime is pretty simple. If, okay. if I may. Um, perhaps one of the times that Ecphelia is away from the grotto... Juliet will uh, try to get Valkos' attention for a private conversation as she is perhaps bandaging some wounds, applying some solves, doing a healing healing of some sort after being... Yeah, she's pretty bruised and beaten up, you notice, from the fight, but, you know, in very good spirits. <clears throat> uh, Valkos... I'm feeling pretty good lately. But there is something that hasn't been sitting right. I I feel that I I, I want my wants are changing, I don't know. I I am conflicted. I feel tethered in a way. by what we have wrought and brought into this city. You know of who I speak. Yes. You and I, we walked away from Celiac for bringing a monster into this world. And here we are, having brought another monster into this world. Exactly. We must kill her. Julius, um... I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> and I'll just remind you, based on this conversation, <laughs> of one thread from last season. Valkos, you had Sawtooth researching ways to destroy vampires. Yes. Right. So, anytime you want to go see Sawtooth and see if he's figured anything out, you can do that. Mm. And now, if it's okay, Juliet, should we have our healing roll? Yes. Yep. Okay. I will do my tinker roll. And uh, I think I get an extra die from that. Ooh. All right, there's a Bloody six, hell. baby. There is a six, because yeah. you have a lot of dice to do that now, which is yeah. a good thing. So a six heals uh, a lot, right? Let's see. It's not a critical, which I think fills the whole Yeah, Six is three, I think. I'm hoping for three. That's what I need. That's what you got. <sighs> hell yeah. Okay, so I, I heal, which means everything moves down one level? That's right. Okay, so now, guys, I'm only... Plasm soaked at level one. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, and I have to determine what being plasm soak, soaked affects. I would say it definitely affects dealings with the supernatural. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, very good. Any other final thoughts about this thread yeah. that you've started? Yeah. Um, 
yeah, I think I kind of... I, Juliette gets close and is like sort of imploring Valkos like you need to find out whatever you can so that we can get ahead of her the, the power that she wields it's it's terrifying <laughs> yes don't worry I'm already on it also thank you for all you have taught me it served me well, most recently. What do you mean? Um, I'm gonna like sucker punch Balkos in the stomach. <laughs> Aww. Cute. Right? Love oh. language. <laughs> but like, oh. uh, I think we yeah. will cut the scene there. Yeah. <laughs> this will only lead to... <laughs> yes. So, okay. So I've got one more downtime activity. Let's 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 keep that in our pocket because I think we need to see so Ecphelia again. Yeah. Oh right, yes. yeah, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ecphelia, this is only your second you're about to spend, correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Ecphelia, what would you like to do? I'm hunting more. Ah, very good. And how much stress do you have left? Five stress. Okay, so unlikely that you'll overindulge, but it could let's, happen. It could happen. Let's see. Okay. All uh, right, where are you hunting now? Same place? During this festival of fools? Oh, no. <laughs> did you oh, overindulge? I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so oh, I love it. What does it mean One. if she overindulges? Well, here's <gasps> what it means. Oh, One, no. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, so I've overindulged. What that means is this. Can we, can we just have a... Uh, a little, a little scene here. <laughs> yes, I'll allow you to set the scene. Is this still in White Crown? Still at this festival? Yeah. Um. The okay. streets are the streets are are, are filling, um, or are, are already full. Like I followed someone home as they were ending. Um. It's uh. You, there's drums. Uh. Th everything is topsy turvy. The fools are in charge, and the, uh, um. <laughs> The, uh, there's there's clerks with masks with like little like uh, royal crowns on their heads. The uh, the uh, officials and lords are wearing um, motley garb and like long bulbous noses and grins that leer out of uh, porcelain masks. And a mask with a big smile is moving among them. Uh, a live little creature that is uh, like a Pragwodi and. Um, you can see them uh, uh, kind of pair off with somebody, whispering into an ear and uh, pairing off and going into perhaps um, like a go the person indicates a door. Ekaprag reaches for it and like can't and uh, shudders and then uh, the other person opens it and beckons them <laughs> in and they follow and they go in together. And there, in the privacy of a dimly lit space, like the, the masks come off, there's, and, and a romantic interlude begins to take place. Um, You're in a dining room, a finely appointed dining room. A Oof. finely appointed dining room. You're knocking and, over candles. <laughs> like candles are being swept off of tables as like right. uh, um, uh, garments are being pulled at. And then the, uh, the desperation and vigor of these um, of these fumblings goes from the desperately erotic to a struggle for survival as um, what was once just like scratches on a back are now trying to almost like pull themselves away as Ekaprag's lips are locked over the lips of this person and and filling uh him with them with uh with essence as this person's life drains away their eyes go blank their jaw goes slack and perhaps a servant at that moment like kind of hearing the noise like <clears throat> opens a door with a candle burning um, they're wearing a little crown on their head because they're a servant and all this topsy turvy and um <laughs> And what they see on top of the dining table is a uh, is a face that kind of like <gasps> turns towards them, and the eyes have moved 
off into the sides of the head somewhat. The teeth are far too long, jagged and sharp. There are joints where there shouldn't be joints. It looks like oh my god, the rib cage is warped and distended, and this <laughs> and it's pale. It's it's pale. It just looks like. A, a canine serpentine thing that has been shaved down to the skin and and uh, it just lets out a <sighs> as it like leaps backward and like scuttles insect like out a window <laughs> <laughs> beautiful so the first thing that happens is I'm going to tick the clock of Ministry of Preservation hunts Ecphelia <laughs> I think that that's only fair. So now you only have four segments left. The next thing that happens is I think you have a normal overindulgence consequence. And you are going to select which one you'd like. Attract trouble. Select or roll an additional entanglement. Brag. Plus two heat. In this case, it wouldn't be bragging. It would just be these crazy actions gave you plus two heat because I'm even envisioning a scene where this monster is loping through the crowd of revelers and they are <laughs> screaming and trying to hide from it and trying to run from it lost your character vanishes for a few weeks play a different character or tapped your current purveyor cuts you off well that doesn't apply to a vampire so yeah. um, would you like to roll an additional entanglement take plus two heat or retire Ecphelia for a little bit. For at least one score, I'd say. Retire them. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I love it. Let's retire them. But I still get a downtime activity, do I not? You do. <laughs> Great. And we can circle back to that. You still have <laughs> You have one more. Okay, right. no problem. So uh, let's now go to Valkos for Valkos' third downtime activity. And I've taken uh, Juliet with me as well, after all. Okay. Our um, your sparring match my with sparring, quotations sparring around match. it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, and we are going to go see Sawtooth because I am also going to heal. Oh. Um, Very good. Yeah, and I kind of, you know, I sip the Sawtooth and it is, I mean, would it have upgraded because he's also tier two, like we're tier he two will now? Be, he'll be tier two now. Amazing. So I'm like, so I kind of see him and I'm like, um, you know, Sawtooth. <laughs> fire come in come what? in fire fire Valkos <laughs> fire really ah <sighs> uh, Juliet uh, I have um tasked Sawtooth with um uh, and I guess flick him a, a coin as well from my pocket what? um and I say I, it's, to... I have I have a coin but uh um, cause it's a good friend. Uh, and I say, he's a, yeah, I tasked him with finding information on, uh, our uninvited guest. Um, oh. and it seems that fire is the way forward. Yes. 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 It'll destroy mm. the physical body. Mm. Now the problem is, wait, hold on. I've been reading books. He says it like oh, that's wow. something he doesn't normally do. Good job. So Pulls tooth. down these really old books. <laughs> ah, sorry, it's dusty. He opens up <laughs> this old book and he says, the problem is that the spirit may be able to migrate to another body. So after you've burned the body, you need to have some means of capturing the spirit. <laughs> that shouldn't be a problem. We can figure out something. Yes. <gasps> a, a bullet in the gut's not going to do much. Cutting off an arm? No. But setting it on fire? <laughs> that will definitely give it cause for concern. Fire. <sighs> fire I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of... And he puts his hand in the middle of the table like uh, you're all going to do like a team gesture <laughs> where you put your hands on top of each other's hands. I kind of pull a knife and I'm like, do you want to play this game? We can play this game. <laughs> and I put my hand on there as well with my with splayed and I'm like... No, I was... I thought... 
Well, I thought this was my test. Well, it was your test, and to yes, become you... a member of the remnant. Oh, Wait, what? Sawtooth. What? Yes. Look, Sawtooth. Um, you're a very good friend. And oh, I see where this is going. No, wait, listen, I'm not finished. It's not you, it's me, right? No, you have always mm-hmm. been part of the Remnant. Just part of it. You understand? Uh, I get it. We right. keep you safer by not being involved. You yes. want to see that I have combat expertise. No, well, I, check I, this out. He pulls a gun. <laughs> I mean, is there a world where I, I just play Sawtooth for the next score? <laughs> if Jared's okay with that? Uh, of course I'm completely okay with that. Oh my god. Is that really what you want to do? I mean, I don't know. If, if, if Ekphelia is really sitting the next one out. Here's what I think is fair. Since Juliet and Valkos are in the scene, they get to they make that decide. call. Whatever you want. Yeah. All right. I kind of look to Sawtooth and I'm like... Mm, it's gone. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I came here for you to help me, but I actually think you can help us even more. <laughs> I had a meeting with the uh, our allies at the Path of Echoes, and funnily enough, they wish for us to uh, pay a visit to a certain ink breaker. We could, perhaps, pass off the information that we just obtained to them. It seems like a simple job, yes? Rather than obviously convince them with fists, which I would love to do. I think a more subtle approach might be useful. And tell me, Sawtooth, would you be interested to join us on this endeavor? We're going to deal with reporters? Yes. I'm great in an interview. Oh, I bet you are. Okay. (laughs) Can I just make one different suggestion? Go on. I thought we were about to kill us a damn vampire. Well, yes, we, we will. We will in time. But before we do so, let us just one step at a time. Yes? All right. I hear you. Hey, why don't you hop up on the table here? Take good care of him. Take good care of my My baby. baby. (laughs) All right. Let me roll, right? He gets plus one. He gets plus one die, right? I get another plus one as well from my vigorous. As well. Oh, 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 damn. Okay, vigorous. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll for Sawtooth though. Okay. What does okay. Sawtooth get? Sawtooth gets two to start, but you've just given him two more dice. Okay. okay, so that's pretty good. Here we go. Sawtooth rolls. His highest is a five. Okay. So I believe that's is that two segments. That's two segments. Do I roll mine as well? No, I think it's just I think that just the the guy that you went to is the guy that you get. What does a coin give him? Does it give him better equipment? Oh, oh yes, it does do help. something. Yeah. It does do something. Um, let's see. I've just taken uh-huh. it from my, uh, uh-huh. from my thing. Uh, I'm not seeing it right away. Juliet's kind of like butt hurt next to him. Like, you know, I, I could have. I, I know. Helped you. I you know. know. Okay. I know. No, I, I think that I don't see anything about spending a coin for this. Oh, right? no. you, can ex- you can spend coin for additional activities. I believe that that's a thing. I thought it could increase the effectiveness. The, yeah, the result. Like or results, the results. Yeah. Basically. Like, that's what I thought it could do because you get them better equipment or something. It probably can. I'm just not seeing it right away. Let's see here. Right. It's hard to find sometimes. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> that's I mean, visiting, that's visiting cr- a physica does, though, right? It does for crafting. Well, which is what it's you've done. For... Which is what you've done. Um, okay. The player gets a six. He decides to spend one coin to improve the result of a critical. I see it in the example. Yes, you can. Right. Would you okay. like to bring that up to a six? Yes. 
So then I get three. Hey, you have done so. Brilliant. But, but is that coming out of the crew coin? No, it's coming out of my coin. I had a personal one coin left. And you are, yeah, it's a personal one coin and it's not out of your stash, right? Because No, it's that, not, out, not out of the stash, no. Okay, great. Just making sure. All right, yeah. definitely you're up to a six and you have healed three segments of your clock. And does yeah. that heal your harm? That healed my bruised. All so right. I'm a, clean, I'm a clean boy. Oh, wonderful. These scoundrels are looking so fresh and so clean. And um, they, yes. Can I, I promise that I'll loop this into something I already did just to make it quick, but could I spend a coin to train my prowess like while I was in the fighting ring? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't see why not. You can definitely so spend two, coin then. for additional downtime activities, right? Yes, that we've done before. Okay. So you and train. Just... When you train, you get plus XP. Mark one XP on the XP track for an attribute or playbook advancement. You could put it in your playbook instead. If you have okay. the appropriate crew training upgrade, Mark plus one XP for two total. Okay. So yes. I level up my prowess. Um, oh my god. Jesus. And I'm gonna get a third dot in skirmish. Oh uh, my oh god. god. She's, she's stacked. <laughs> oh my god. She's a fighter leech. She's a Jesus. she's multi-class now. She mm-hmm. took a she took a couple levels of barbarian. Wow. Uh, all right. <clears throat> all right. Well done. And now let us turn to Ekphelia for Ekphelia's final downtime activity. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Um, laying low. Just imagine back in the little apartment of Ekaprag, high up, garret, sloping roof, dangling little puppets and things. Um, a, a makeup table vanity with a mirror and in that mirror like a hulking shape with the mask on you can just see behind the mask there's something with a few too many teeth and and in one pane of the mirror and in another pane of the mirror it's it's full golem mode of just like she's slipping away from you ducky your little Omi Poloni's gone away, seeking out a brawnier arm, isn't she? Yes, I dare say that she is. Trying to move in secret. Both of them speaking a language of sighs and groans. She's got his Lapa's all over her, darling. And she's yours. You've done it all for her. And she's throwing you away. Well, we'll just have to do something about that. She doesn't see you like we do. She doesn't understand that life is a perversion. It's grotesque. Decay into nothing. But we can make her better, can't we? Snuff her out. Pull her out of that dying shell and put her into him. And then everyone gets what they want, don't they? She gets to be with him. And she gets to live forever. She gets to be what we are. She gets to be like us. And then we get to be together. Forever. Oh my god. Forever. And I want to start a project. Turn (laughs) Juliet Belrose into a vampire. In the body of Valkos. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, uh, okay. I'm not even sure how to approach that long term project. Um, I don't. I hope it's not long term. I hope it's next time. Um, <laughs> Um, I describe, want to see, uh, describe what your character does to advance the project clock and roll one of your actions. A long-term project can cover a wide variety of activities. Based on the goal <laughs> of the project, the GM will tell you the clock to create and suggest a method by which you might make progress. So, holy shit! There are several how, steps. how many segments? How many segments? Tell me how many. Tell me the steps. Kill Juliet Belrose. Right. Remove her spirit. Put spirit into Valkos. Keep spirit in Valkos until such time has elapsed that we are one. That's four different objectives. And I would say that we would double that to create a project clock. Okay. And so I am going to go ahead and move an eight segment clock. Turn Juliet <sighs> into a vampire. And now you can use your first action. Uh, what's your first action? Part, first, you know, it's like part one of killing her. My first Ross, action is you. to have this a. Is <laughs> my first action is to have a clandestine meeting with Marlene, a pugilist. Um, <laughs> oh so my like, god! Got humiliated today, <laughs> didn't you, dearie? Big things come in small packages. Seems she to got, me that she got lucky. Yeah, seems to me that the people of the pits might be in for a rematch. Lord knows I'd love to see it. Had her on the ropes for a bit, darling, but she got the better of you in the end. I don't suppose you'd appreciate a little aid. Aid? It's a thing what do you about want me to do. Well, it seems to me. She's shown you up. Perhaps you'd like a victory that's a little bit more permanent. You talking about hurting her permanently? Just so. Let me ask you this. Would it hurt Valkos? Oh my dear. He would be beside himself. Well, then I... I don't know what he'd do to fill the void. I think that Julia might suffer a little accident. Sure. <laughs> well, if there's anything I can do to expedite the process, you just call on your friend. What action are you using? Um, I think that's a, uh, sounds like consort. Sure. So, uh, she doesn't need swing. All uh, right, here comes the <laughs> consort. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Six. A six? All right, there's eight segments. You rolled a six, which means three of those lucky. segments are six? all. Yeah, Wait, three where? of those. Did I not? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I totally misread that. I'm sorry. I'm so you sorry. You got a three and a one. I got a three. <laughs> Holy shit, Bad, dude. How, how quick wow, you, you are kill really us, man. trying to murder Juliet. I really okay. thought I was like, oh, maybe some vampire shit, you know? No, no, no. I, I was just, I, I didn't scroll down. Three. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, there we go. One segment of the clock has been filled. And so Marlene is going to start making some physically dangerous trouble for Juliet. And that is part of Ecphelia's plan to destroy Juliet Shit. and move her soul into Valkos's body. <laughs> it's twisted. It's perverse. <laughs> but that's just the kind of plan a vampire would come up with. What character do we think Ross Bryant is going to play <laughs> next time? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like Sawtooth. <laughs> Sawtooth, man. Uh, oh, that's right. Okay, oh. I'm so excited. I'll make Me a little too. Sawtooth playbook. <laughs> yes. This is gonna be great. And we have our score as well. We are going to silence a reporter, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we are ready for next time. I think that's yeah. the end of the session. Congratulations, oh players. <laughs> some great dice today and yeah. some great situations. I'm really terrified to see where all of this goes. <laughs> Thoughts, oh, feelings, yeah. concerns? Yeah, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I I have no idea. This is great. PvP and also just like I you know, we're very powerful, but like Ecphelia is so powerful. I have no idea how this is gonna roll out, which is great. Wheels within wheels, baby. I hope all of the players prepare themselves emotionally for the fact that it sounds like somebody is going to die. Yes. Now, excuse yep. me while I go and study up on the PvP section <laughs> of the Blades in the Dark rulebook. While I go do that, we're going to say goodbye. Thank you, Abu Salim, Josephine McAdam, and Ross Bryant. An incredible game. We'll see you next time. 